This week's episode of The Grid is sponsored by Impix. Shoot today, upload tonight, we ship tomorrow. Manfrotto, imagine more. On One Software, software that gets you back to shooting. Adorama, more than a camera store. And Tiffin, helping create the world's greatest images. Hey everybody, <laughs> welcome to The Grid Live, the weekly talk show about photography, Photoshop, just the industry, anything that we come up with. My name is Matt Laskowski and I am joined here today by a very special guest. I take that back. By, by a guest. By a guest. By a, RC. <laughs> by, a, by a regular guest. I'm like I'm like the stand-in for everybody. It's like whenever whenever there's a problem, it's like, all right, well, you go in and do it. So. No, dude, I don't think I don't think you're the stand-in. I think I think you've kind of become like the the, the, the part of the show. Uh, anyway, I'm here with RC Concepcion. What's going on, man? How are you? Ah, you know, it's dude. Been it's a, actually it's it's actually good to see you here. Yeah, I, uh, I this is this is my first show. This is my first week back since the fr- like June seventh. No, just to kind of let you guys know, we have an office just on the other side of this studio, and all four of us sit like next yeah, to one another. Pete, me, then RC, then Corey. And we walk by all the time, and it's just black. And we're like, well, what's Matt doing? We don't know, but he's black. I mean, we do know, obviously. He's out <laughs> doing on seminars. You had a bunch of big seminars, actually. Yeah, I did uh, I did six Lightroom seminars in, in June. So I think I did San Francisco, Boston, Houston, Richmond, Washington, D.C., and Lansing, Virginia. Which were your favorite? All of them. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> Good answer. No, but uh, you know what? They all. It, it's funny because you go from city to city, and you think like, you you, you think like everything. Because I'm teaching the same content, mm-hmm. yeah. And I don't know how. I I don't even do it on the level that a band would do. Obviously, mm-hmm. I don't know how bands do it because like, especially when you teach them back to back, like one on Tuesday and one on Wednesday. You say the same exact things, and you kind of know where people are going to ooh and ah and chuckle and mm-hmm. things like that. And it's just it's it's really weird. But the the funniest part about it is. It's very different crowds. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like every every crowd kind of kind of takes on to a different part of Lightroom right. differently. You know, it's like one, the crowd in San Francisco loves the book module and, and keeps asking questions about books. And then the next day, the crowd in Michigan loves the map module and keeps asking about, you know, questions about the map module. So you'd think they'd be the same from city to city, but it's actually very different. All right. You know so. what I did while you were gone? What'd you do? You play Call of Duty? I play Call of Duty. Did you like level? You prestige like and on 10 top times. Of playing, no, I'm still just fourth prestige. <laughs> but on top of Call of Duty, I hung pictures in my dining room. I saw that. Dude, you get done. Did, and, <laughs> done, uh, done, done, done. S- so, do we have a do we have confirmation whether we have the video? We do have the video. We have we the have video. video. We have so, the video. So all right, so let me set this up. Yeah, set it up. Um, so, Mpix is having a contest called Mpix Hit My House, right? And basically, you enter mpix.com forward slash hit my house, and they're going to give people, I think it was like five grand, five thousand to do whatever it is that you want with your house. So, I know you guys can hear the rain. Fireman 32 turned around and said, I hear the rain. And I'm like, I do too. It's and I have to go like to the bathroom. Crazy so out it, here. It hurts. So, but so they turn around. They give they give these people this, and obviously, like we can't join. But stop that, dude. But then they, I'm sitting there, and I'm like, dude, how cool would it be to just finally work on this? Like, if you look at my house, it looks like Al Qaeda. Mm-hmm. It was like white. There's nothing around, and it's like everything looked very transient because we never got a chance to do anything. Well, you know what? Watch Take the a video. look at the video. Yes, yeah, take video. a look at the video. You guys can see what my dining room looks like, and now what it looks like. You know, now that it's better. So, hey everybody, RC here. I have a confession to make. I'm a photographer. I spend all my time taking pictures, but you know where those pictures don't end up? My walls. I don't do anything with them. We bought this house in December, and there isn't that many prints up here, and you know what? It doesn't feel like home yet. Now, MPix is a contest that's going to help you with exactly that same problem. Go to mpix.com forward slash hip my house. You put in your email address and one of you guys is going to win a $5,000 shopping spree where you can get your entire house done up by Mpix. Now, I don't qualify, so I actually had to go and bite the bullet and order a series of prints from Mpix. I had my buddy Rich come in and mark some spots, and then I had my buddy Pete come in here, and little by little we were able to put all of these pictures up, and now all my photography is up on my walls. And that's the cool part about it. When I take all my pictures and I put them up there, it does make my house feel a lot like a home. 
and it can with you too. Make sure you check out mpix.com forward slash hip my house. Maybe you can win $5,000 to be able to do this to your home. Take care. All right, we're back on the grid live with my co-host. There he is. <laughs> you just had to uh, readjust your microphone. Oh, no, that's, sorry. You, you did take your microphone off, didn't you? No. <laughs> I but didn't really go to the. We're well, luckily room. audio doesn't play during our. Uh, during, so no, hey, that was a very cool video, and you know what? You, I, I think, I, and that, what, the coolest part about it, I don't think you're alone. I think there's many, many more people out there that that are in the same boat, and I'm. See, I'm sad to say that I've been in my house for five years, and I have some pictures on my walls, but nowhere near as many as I should. I, I gotta tell you, I, dude, I was pretty. I was actually kind of embarrassed. Like we taped the entire thing. And I'm sitting there and I'm looking at everything and I sat back and I was actually kind of very embarrassed about it. And Brad had said, hey, listen, you're going to do a blog post. And I was like, I like how I feel about putting them up. I like what happened with everything. But I was just like, now I got to tell people that I suck, like that I sell prints and I do all these things. But I don't do anything for my own house. So in a very weird way. It was actually very comforting that everybody else was just like, well, you know, I don't do that too. And I was like, oh my God, thank God. Yeah, I think there's a lot (laughs) of people out there. So so that part I thought was pretty cool. Great contest. And you know what? Here's the deal. How many people are going to win? One. Only one person's going to win. Only one. I know there's a lot of people watching. Only one's going to win. If you take anything out of it, Go, go get some prints. Get some prints and put them up on your wall. Whether whether you, you win the contest or you don't, there's a yeah, great place entire, to get some prints done. I did an you entire, can have them up on your wall tomorrow. Yeah, I did an entire post over at scottkelby.com talking a little bit about, I did a guest post this past Monday, yeah. talking about the entire experience and how it worked for me. And the doy man, you're absolutely right. This is only U.S. stuff. Unfortunately, I, Empix doesn't do overseas stuff. So unfortunately, yes, this is another way that we're sticking it to everybody overseas. I'm sorry. Sorry, <laughs> it's just that that's what they do i'm, I'm sorry yeah. it's only u.s people that's all right um, all right um there, there there's an interesting person that's also on the set today i don't even know what to say from the far east <laughs> from the far east <laughs> oh, we have hell. master p collins <laughs> today i am the french ninja <laughs> All of you are wrong. I am ninja today, not go go girl. Yes, welcome, welcome to the grid. And for for those of you that can't see, that's actually a voiceover. Pete's Pete's not really saying that. There's a, there's somebody that's just ah, saying it over. Your technique, it is good. Your skill, not so good. Pete, how's everything looking over there today in the? Uh... Wow, I can't breathe in this thing. Everything's looking pretty good, except for we're having a monsoon go on over here. Oh, by the way, I should do this for uh, Mike Cabasi sent this because I had uh, steak and shake last week, so I am the In and Out Ninja. In and Out Burger. So there we go, Mike. That's for you. The double double. Woo. Animal style. Ugh. Double double animals. Yeah, I'm. Like... Everything's going pretty good, guys. Yeah. Now he looks like a he looks like the scarecrow. <laughs> <laughs> just like that. I'm like, but you know what? That's one of the things that I like committed. He's committed to the Oh, park. yeah. You can't see his feet. His feet, ha- he has sandals on. So apparently I'm not wearing wear any pants sandals. once again. But oh, uh, see, okay. Andy Borzy, that's exactly what I thought. When he had that over his head, it looked a little like a burka. I was like, <laughs> he's wearing a burka. What are you doing, dude? Uh, anyway. We're going to take a very quick break. When we get back from our break, our, gear, our, our topic today was actually brought to you by Mr. Brad Moore. Brad came to my office earlier today, and uh, he said two words, gear porn. And I looked at him, and I said, Brad, is there a problem? And he goes, no, we could talk about gear. And I was like, dude, that's a really cool topic, just our favorite And then gear. when you're finished, talk about porn. <laughs> <laughs> and then and hookers, like, and then pop. And then pop. So, <laughs> but anyway, no, great topic. You know, we're just going to talk about gear. We're going to talk about our favorite gear, but also kind of take questions from you guys. Uh, you know, advice, like what do you guys thoughts see? from you guys. Yeah. yeah what, what, what do you want to see our, our favorite gear on? Whether it's software, hardware, photography, lenses, camera, whatever. Start thinking about what you want to know about our favorite gear. And uh, and we will we will tell you. We've even got some uh, little demo samples to kind of. Yeah, I mean, like we'll talk about the stuff here. that we like. Yeah. But for the most part, it's like. I know you get it. I get it a lot on Google+. Plus. People will be like, hey, what do you think of this? Mm-hmm. What do you think of the Nori Square Bounce? And it's like, oh, well, I think it's really cool. I've yep. used it. I haven't used it. This is the time in the chat. If you're watching this in the chat, go sign up in the chat. Open it up in your new window and start inside of there 
and start asking questions about different things. If you want to, if you want to know like our take on something, that's a good place to do yeah. it. If it's negative, chances are we'll probably just be like, hmm. <laughs> mm. And and you know I mean part part of what I, I was hoping we could do is like almost kind of commit to like our favorites in certain areas. Like right. you know, if I had to pick one lens, what lens am I going to pick? Right. You know what body am I going to pick? What tripod am I going to pick? Right. So we'll go over a couple of things like that. We'll do that right after our break. Hi, my name's Dave Black. I want to welcome you to our light painting set right here on location. Light painting is one of the most stylized approaches to lighting and photography that there is. It's a very artistic approach. It's not with strobes, large power packs. It's all done with flashlights and mobile light sources. Very stylized, very exciting stuff. You can do it. I can teach it to you right on my video at kelbytraining.com. So come join me at my light painting class. back <laughs> i'm sitting there and i'm like pointing to our guest and i'm like we can't forget spencer i know for out loud. he's we like have, right there we have an in-studio guest today so uh so spencer from is, uh, long island rhode island not long island rhode island spencer from rhode island is here today he came by he came by earlier today to to kind of just tour the office he had mentioned to somebody and, and came by to see if he could tour and, and we gave him a tour of the office and then uh and then pete was talking to him earlier and said once you you know come by for for the the grid later. Oh, so dude, check He this left out. his family alone. Where are they? They're they're like looking around somewhere though, right? I don't know where they are. They're somewhere. They're hopefully not outside because it literally is a monsoon outside. I now, tried to get him to dress like a ninja, but he wouldn't. He wouldn't <laughs> do it. Now, what Spencer does not know is that I'm actually going to put him to work. So he better start getting a little closer to the right to the left of Adam. <laughs> and I'm going to have him push this thing out at some point or another, but not yet. We will do that in a second. He's going to be a vag. He's going to be a vag. Voice activated gear, gear hander. Gear, gear hander. And gear spinner. So the other thing that I want to point out is also on the chat. If you're following the chat that's on G-Snap, Jeff Snyder from Adorama just chimed in and said cool. that he's there as well to answer any kind of gear questions that you would want. So thank you very much, Adorama. Thank you very Jeff, much, you're Jeff a good Snyder, man. Perfect for being out there. For Jeff to be now, too. That we'll have a lot. I'm sure we'll have a lot of questions. Now, do you want to start? Why don't you start off telling us a little bit about your gear? Kind of um, what kinds of things do you like doing? And, and the first one that I noticed, which I didn't, I got to be honest with you, I didn't see today. And I look over and I see you on your website. You have the ski report com and you say you're saying goodbye no, to ski report.com maklaskowski.com Maklaskowski you go to the ski report.com you know what you'll find available well or or ski reports or ski reports but <laughs> anyway so in here you said that you're saying goodbye to your favorite lens and i thought this was actually kind of interesting because yeah i was like what lens are you giving up what, oh what's yeah up? all right so i wrote a uh, i wrote a blog post over uh, a few days ago um and i called it why i'm saying goodbye to my favorite landscape photo lens um and what my new favorite was so uh the idea the idea was uh, my my the, my go-to landscape lens has always been the nikon uh, 14 to 24 and and it's a great lens um it's a big lens it's a bulky lens. It's kind of, it's kind of expensive, but it's always been a really good, really sharp lens. Uh, the problem, I have had a couple problems with it. One of them was the shape of it. It's got that 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 round, uh, bulbous type of a, a, a front, you know, the glass on the front of the lens. So it doesn't take any filters. Okay, um, it's a heavy lens. It's a big, heavy lens. The lens cap. Because of the shape of the lens, the lens cap doesn't actually, it's not like a lens cap normally, it's like a, a little cup that goes over the front of the lens. And I was always losing it. And I know you were always losing yours. Yep. Uh, and, the, and the problem is, is you know, all photographers will relate to this, you can't put it in your pocket because it's like this thick, all right? So you, it's not something you could just throw in your back pocket when you're shooting. So, but the, my biggest one was it didn't take filters. Um, and I've been doing a lot of long exposure stuff lately um, and just, you know, a polarizer or anything like that. Um, so 
I was in search of another lens, and I started looking at the Nikon 16 to 35, um, and then I eventually I started renting it from Lens Pro to go. Um, took it out on a few shoots with me, and uh, and that, that's pretty much that's become my new landscape photo lens. Uh, I'm gonna have to continue renting it because it is on back order everywhere that I look. Uh, so I will continue to rent it when I go out and, and shoot landscapes and outdoor stuff. But uh, it's it's about it's almost half the weight of the 14 to 24. It's almost half the cost of the 14 to 24. It's a 77 millimeter lens, so it takes all of your normal, um, all of your normal, uh, your filters and all that stuff. Um, it's not f 2.8, it's f4, but I'm shooting landscapes, I'm shooting outdoors. I I'm usually not shooting at the, the most wide open aperture. I'm usually shooting at f11, f16, f22 or something like that. So, so not having f2.8 um, and having f4 instead doesn't bother me. I'll probably never get down that low. Um, so that, it's got VR on it. I'm usually on a tripod, so I haven't really used the VR on it, but uh, incredibly sharp. I, I, I've compared it to my 14 and 24 photos. No sharpness issues. It's it's every bit as sharp that visibly that I can see um, on the four, as the 14 to 24. So uh, that's kind of become my new my new go-to landscape lens. 16 to 35 from Nikon. I think Canon even has an equivalent as well. Very so. very good. I like that. And it's, like I, it's, and it's the only cheaper. reason that I'm the only reason that I'm giggling is because Mike Wyasek just posted something that said, "Yeah, it's all mine." And he posted a picture of the 16 to 35. He just got it in the mail. Oh, Mike! <laughs> well, By the way, let me take a question here, real quick. Mike Pro, Mike Lens Pro to go might be my new favorite friend. Oh. <laughs> all right, let's see. Uh, Stacy Three Hearts, ND filters, variable or fixed? I like using uh, fixed personally. When I'm working with stuff. Now, that said, I'm, I'm going to make a bit of a confession. A lot of the times, whenever I'm talking about lens filters or the use of lens filters, I'll almost always leave any kind of lens filter use for software, not hardware. In very specific instances, for me, I find that I, I need to use a big ND, like a, a specialty filter. So my favorite filter right now is Lee. The, Lee has this big stopper. The big stop. stopper. Do you have a pic? Bring up a picture that you use of big stopper because oh, I think yeah. that this can be good. So there's specialty cases where you need like eight, ten stops and things like that that I think that are really, really cool. But if you turn around and you look at what's happening on color correction and, and augmentation and debanding and all bunch of things like that. On the software side, you'd be surprised. You could actually do some really, really cool things in software and not have to worry about screw, unscrew, change, which one do you bring, how do you bring it. Let me show you something really quickly on my computer. I'll turn this into a bit of a tutorial. But here I have this picture that I took when I was in Miami and we were just taking pictures of cars. We we're just kind of hanging out. Now, I'm gonna go over here under filter and under filter I have a filter called Tiffin. And under Tiffin, Tiffin is a company that does a lot of DFX filters and things like that. So I'm gonna go into DFX3. Now, I have this set up in trial mode. I just wanted you to take a look at it real quick because I saw the question and I was like, dude, DFX is gonna be something that we can talk about there. Take a look. Anything that you would wanna do that you would do screwing into the front of your camera, you can automatically do in software. So at this point, what I would say is, you want to denoise, you want to change specific stops, you want to change exposures, warming, a lot cooling. of that warming, cooling specialty, any kind of lens correction that you would want to yep. be able to do, all of that stuff you can do right from inside of here. So more often than not, I usually start telling people, from the, that that makes filters. from the company that, makes, that filters, makes filters, so go there yeah. to do that. So if they're doing it right, if, if Tiffin's going out and going, hey, guess what? You can put this into software. Why wouldn't you do it on the software side? Yeah. That said, there are very specific instances where I think that things like ND um, require actual actual filters. My favorite filter is the Big Stopper. It's a ten stop fixed filter. Yeah. Matt, do you like the 10 stop? <laughs> I, I do. So if you pull up my computer, this is, um, I, I tried to do a different take on the Boston skyline, right? Because, you know, just, I, I've seen the photo many times before. So I tried to do a different take. I didn't do it at night. I got up early and I went there for sunrise, which by the way, sunrise in Boston is way too freaking early. 5 a.m. It was like 5.03 <laughs> a.m. Crazy. Anyway, so I went there for sunrise because you can see, you can see right over there, there's the sun coming up over back and to the right of me. But this was about a three and a half minute exposure. Um, and I'm digging, I'm digging the big stopper, man. Look at, you could see what it does to the water and you can see what it does to the sky. 
all right, because the sky's changing that was kind of colorless at the time. And then the water, if you just take one shot, if you just take one, one, you know, a non long exposure photo, it's choppy water. It doesn't look like anything great. So this was about a three, three and a half minute exposure. Um, and I'm, I'm digging what you can do with the, uh, with that, that long exposure stuff here. I'll show you one more. So what's the problem? With Here's one more. Oh, I love this. I love this picture. So there's, there's one I more. I love this you. picture. This was about, I think this was like a 60 or 90 second exposure, uh, Baker beach in San Francisco. The bridge wasn't looking all that great. So I kind of just went up to the rocks. So what's the horrible part about trying to order a big stopper? Ah, uh, they're on like, it's, it's like a year and a half back order. Or <laughs> it's something. like a six month back order. Cause you not only got to get the filter, there's a bracket that goes along with it, but, um, yeah, it's a 10 stop filter. There's other 10 stop filters out there as well. You might be able to get your hands on. Sure. Um, but as far as filters go, I got the, the ND, the, the big stopper. I also have a three stop and then I carry a polarizer around because it, you just can't, uh, when you're using a polarizer, you just can't recreate that in software. If you're the reflections and, 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 and different things like that, you just can't recreate it in software. I will never take a graduated neutral ND filter yep. with me again because I can recreate that in software better and easier than I can mm -hmm. trying to put it in front so of my camera. Hardware side, uh, oh, wait a minute. Do we have a website for, for the Big Stopper? Uh, I think uh, it's leadfilters.com yeah. are the guys that do the Big Stopper stuff, so you can find that there. If you want to look at the Tiffin software, Yep. Tiffany FX, that's a good place for you to do it. Next question. Okay, so this, this is actually a really good question. What is your opinion on Tokina Tamron Sigma lenses? Okay, here's my opinion. I think they're all fine. I use Nikon, and, and, and I always, the, the piece of advice I always give to people is use what your friends use. You know, if, if, if Mac piece, people come up and ask us about Mac or PC all the time. And I always tell people, you, use what your friends use, you, Canon, Nikon you have a built-in support network that way, mm -hmm. you know? If I'm a Canon shooter, and when I first started here, I was a Canon shooter. Eight years ago, I was a Canon shooter. Um, and, and I started here, everybody that, that worked here was shooting Nikon. So we'd go out and shoot, and you know what? They're, they're switching gear, they're switching lenses, they're borrowing lenses from each other, they're doing all this stuff, and here I am with my Canon gear. If I, if I only brought one battery and my battery's going low, you know what? I was out of luck. Um, so say you use what your friends use. When it comes to Nikon, I, I just, I'm a fan of Nikon lenses, but here's the thing. Tamron, Sigma, Tokina, whatever, they wouldn't be around if they didn't make good lenses, mm -hmm. you know? So if, if they're more in your budget and they're more in your price range, it, it, here's the thing. If you want a 70 to 200 lens and you can't afford the Nikon or the Canon version, then get another version. If, mm -hmm. if they're more in your price range and that's what's going to work for you, get the lens rather than do without the lens. Because no. I think lenses are a big part of, of photography. That so. said, if you're within $200 of a Nikon save, lens, yeah. wait. Wait. I kind of just have this, I kind of have this feeling that, you know what? Nikon makes my cameras. I got to figure they know how to make my lenses a little mm -hmm. bit better. But I know plenty of people good... that shoot Sigma, Tokina, and they're fine. Yeah. I can't tell the difference. I look at their photos up on the wall. What'd you shoot that with? Oh, that was with my Sigma. Well, I, I, always, I always tell the meetup stories. I had a meetup. I run this local meetup group here in Tampa, and we had all these people come in, and there was this girl that was sitting there, and actually, I'm not going to cut to it just yet because I, I have the picture on screen, but this girl's like, she's using, if I, had, if I remember correctly, she was using a D300 camera. This mm -hmm. was maybe about, maybe about a year ago, maybe, I'm, I'm guessing. Yeah, about a year. Yeah. Uh, D300 camera and a Dokina 17 to 50. And she's an SB 600s, and she's sitting there. She's like, I can't make this work. I need a new camera. These pictures don't look good. These pictures don't look good. I need a new camera. And she was just very annoying about it. And I was just like, dude, it's not your camera. Just chill for a second. I was like, look, do me a favor. Grab this. Grab this. Go over here. You grab this. Go over here. You stand right there. Hold that microphone. Take this shot. And I took this shot. And this is one of my all-time favorite shots of this guy, Damone. And I was like. I was like that one. Dude, it's a great shot. You know what? It was shot with a Dokina on a D300. Mm -hmm. I have a D3S in my hand. I shot that with a D300. Yeah. And I'm like, it's not, you know, sometimes we over obsess about that stuff. I think that in a lot of, in a lot of degrees, you can, you can get a lot of that stuff right off. You know, you, you can get good results with most of these things. If yeah. you're within a couple hundred, I would say, wait, for me, that, mm -hmm. that's personally. But can you get good shots? Sure you can. Absolutely. 
All right, let's see here. I'd love to hear if you have a sort of pre-made kits. You know, here's my small minimum go-to pack for quick photography trip. Here's my full kit for shooting on site, etc. I'll let you take that one first. Oh yeah, I do. I do usually. I do usually set up kits, and this is where, this is where I'm going to use my friend uh spencer he's gonna come in and kind of help me out here with this so let's just cut to my camera real quick here or uh, cut to my computer screen i'm a big fan of think tank i'm a big fan of their products here they have a bunch of different things that you can use spencer do me a favor grab this thing right here so we'll go ahead <laughs> and thing. just kind of push that whole monstrosity yeah. over that way and you can actually roll that on all four legs I mean, on all four wheels. Okay. Sorry, here we oh, go. So here, so watch this. So a lot of the times I carry this thing with me, right? So this is how it, this is how it kind of sets up. Oh, they're pointing to my microphone, but I have a lav mic on. So this is what it looks like, right? So four wheels kind of sets everything up. Laptop goes here. This is the first one that I'm going to play with. Well, I'll come back to the other ones. We call RC Tackleberry. Tackleberry. <laughs> no, I... I call it prepared. Oh, no. He, here's the thing. You, I, I have made fun of RC for it in the past. And you know who's the first person who forgets everything that goes, RC, do you have something? And he's always got it. So, so I could say that I've made fun of him for it, small, but I could, I could, I've also used, taken advantage of you always having something with no, you. Small kit setup. Right, so Think Tank, I use this bag. So this bag lets me put, and this is how I carry it to work. So this bag is with me all the time at work. So whenever I need to get to a small location, this is what I'll use. My laptop goes in here, I have a 15 inch laptop. Then from here, I got pockets here, I got pockets at the top, that stuff isn't a problem. But the piece de resistance, if you will, just to do a, to pull a peat, is this little pocket, right? So this thing opens up, then this secondary pocket here opens up here. So now, inside of here, I can carry one camera, I usually carry my D3S in there, 24 to 70, right, 24 to 70, 70 to 200, and I throw a couple of flashes in here as two L's. So what I'll do is I'll take one flash, I'll bend it as an L, I'll take another flash, bend it as an L, and I stick them like that on top of one another, and I throw them both in here. Flash sticks. Yeah, and then at that point, they turn around and uh, I can put memory cards, and I'll put my card yeah. reader right in here. That's my portable setup. And that's it, that's all I need. So when I have to do something small, you know, this is the Think Tank shapeshifter. So that's kind of where I go with most of that stuff. Uh, where'd Spencer go? Spencer, what, dude, come on. Get a, get just, <laughs> no, just grab that. Poor other, Spencer, he that. thought he was gonna get to sit back, relax and watch a show. I'm just kidding, I'm just messing with Spencer. So here, so other portable setups that we have here. Here, uh, hold on to this for me. We'll get to Stubby in a second. So. Oh, we haven't even met. I'm sorry. Hi. Nice to meet you. Um, here, and hold on to this guy. We'll go back to I mean, that. We've been ordering him around, and you didn't. I know. Even, we didn't even. Right. So I'll come back to you in a yes. second. Here, come over this way. I'll get back to this. So, in terms of small setup, this is the other thing that I use. Pull up this website. Pull up Stand Bagger, Matt. Stand Bagger. That's these guys. This guy's actually. It's a, it's a very small town. Like it, he's, you know, sole proprietorship kind of guy, and he makes these bags. These bags are actually kind of cool. So I'll carry my book bag and then I carry this inside of my bag. Inside of this bag, and all it does is this. So that's like a newer model, but this bag, watch this. I open and look at what I got in here. So deep in here, I have an umbrella, right? Because worse comes to worse, I could always use my umbrella. Throw light all over the place. Inside of here, Manfrotto makes these mini stands. Yep. which collapse really, really small. On the end of them, I can go ahead and I can either screw, you know, SB900 feet. That's good. And let's see, next one has a second one. The last one is one of my new favorite ones, and this is actually made by Oban. Oh, that would, yeah. This is my, tr this gets this, which also gets something that's in here that I got to kind of push out. But all of this stuff, this is actually my portable kit. So see, one, two, those are actually, I don't know if you can see these all the way down here, right? So these, these umbrella mounts that we have here will go, this will screw onto here. Once I get that screwed onto there, this umbrella, this goes onto here, and this can be- you just point it. 
right? So I always carry a set of sticks with me to give to somebody because you never know when somebody's going, going to need this. Now this is made by Oben. This is an Oben tripod. I think it's something that B&H sells. But this one is heavier. But what I like about this is, you hear that? If you take this all the way at the very, very bottom. Got little legs. So now you screw that back in. And now you can take this and if you need to have an individual light set up, right? I mean, is it gonna get blown over? Maybe, a little bit, right? It depends and it's, where you are, yeah. It depends where you are. But if you need to have some, if you don't have anybody with you and you need to do a quick portrait with somebody. It's better than nothing. Better than nothing, you but, throw that up there. And I like, even if you don't use it this way, you'll see a lot of people, you see a lot of people just hold it and point it too. Yep. Yeah, and, then, so. and that's the thing. It's like, if all of a sudden I'm out on a shoot with Spencer, and I'm like, Spencer, do me a favor. Why don't you grab this, and you know, can you kick a light into this one section? He can go ahead and grab this monopod, and he can be the person that's throwing the light. Yeah. Right? So he'll go out and he'll do it. It's not carbon fiber, it's aluminum. It's a little bit heavy. You can just go ahead and stand that right there, and, uh, and that's good. Cool. Not too, too bad. All right. Um, that's small setup. That's my portable, oh, portable gosh. setup. <laughs> one small still. So. All right, uh, I'll give you. I'll give you a quick. I mean, just my pre-made kit. If I'm if I'm just walking around, um, I have a D3 right now. We'll we'll talk about bodies in a second here. So I'll just give you what I have right now. I have a D3. If I'm just walking around, travel, photo walk, whatever. My Nikon 20, uh, 28 to 300. If if I'm going on a landscape shoot, I've got the same. You know, my body, my camera body. I've got the 16 to 35, and again, the 28 to 300. That's going to be, that's pretty much going to be my lenses um, for, for just general landscape, outdoor shooting. Uh, the, the, so, and a lot of people say, you know, 28 to 300 for landscape. Yes. The one thing I hate, I hate switching lenses all the time. And what the 28 to 300 lets me do is I can still get pretty wide with it, but I can zoom in and get some of the details. Mm -hmm. and, and when you're outdoor and, and, and doing that kind of stuff, it, the details can sometimes become a, a really great shot. So I love the 28 to 300. It's not the fastest autofocusing lens. So you're probably not going to take it on lots of portrait shoots with you. But for, for landscapes where you're on a tripod, you don't have to worry about it. Works out great. But going on a portrait shoot, 70 to 200. That's my lens. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Let's see what we have there. What's the best tripod and ball head? Ah, all right. Best best tripods right you now. You go big. You go big tripod. I'll go small tripod. Okay. Uh, what's your small tripod? The Gitzo Traveler. Okay. Gitzo. The, the Gitzo Traveler. There's nothing. There's really nothing on the market out there that's smaller than it. It will fit into your laptop bag. It literally. I, I, you would have. I'd show it to you today if it weren't raining outside and I could get it from my car. But it's it's literally like. It, it, look at the size of my laptop. That's what it folds up to. When, when you're done with it. So it'll fit inside of your, your 15 inch laptop bag. So I go with the Gitzo Traveler and, uh, and my tripod forever, or my ball head for everything is the uh, Really Right Stuff BH40. Check this out for my, for my small tripod. I don't have I it here. Do you know why I don't have it here? Because it's out with Scott Kelvey. He's playing with it. I've, I've lended them for a little while. This right here for, from Really Right Stuff is hands, Oh, okay. Let's go ahead and we'll restart over here real quick. Oh, you know what? It's the it's really right stuff. TQC 14. The key, the TQC 14 tripod with a BH 30 ball head. What do I like about this? There it is. This is actually very small, so it's about yay big. I tell people not really all that big. The head on this is similar to the BH 40, right? This is the BH 40. This is my medium sized tripod, right? So. The medium sized tripod, this is a Gitso 2541, which I like. I mean, Gitso makes a mean tripod. This, mm -hmm. is what you, this is where you go. But I'm switching over in small tripods to so the really right stuff. I like that one. The, this is the BH40. Now, let me show you the two things on the BH40. The BH40 has this slot right here. Mm -hmm. It's probably hard to see. And then it has another slot on the opposite side. So there's two of these kind of slots. And then it also has this tension knob which controls the tension of the ball. This BH30 is probably about 70% of its size. So much smaller, it's rated for the exact same weight. The only thing that you lose is one of these slots and that knob, which I never, that knob, which I never use. No, I don't either. One of these snots, slots, which I'm like, if I only have one, I'm okay with that. Yeah. So 
for that, it I don't was, shoot it, that, vert- that much vertical anymore. It's anyway. a super small tripod, and I can throw it straight down with the head on it, right in my bag, and I'm done. Yeah. So that right there has been. So, I, so I'll be I'll be the so I'll I'll disagree slightly and say, I love really right stuff stuff, um, and on the big tripod side. I love really right stuff stuff, and I love their ball heads. On the small tripod, I would say for the money, you could you could get the Gitzo Traveler, and you'll have something even smaller. Okay. Than than that for the money, if the really right stuff one were half the price of the Gitzo Traveler, because the Gitzo Traveler ain't cheap. If we're half the price, I'd mm-hmm. say, well, you know, obviously get that. Mm-hmm. But money for money, I would I'd go for the small tripod there. I love really right. I love their big tripods and I love their ball. See, to me, there's I no other have, ball head on the market. Than the BH55? Than, the, the, than any, yeah. every, any really right oh, stuff. Oh, ball stuff. head? Yeah. Any really right stuff. And there's no that, other ball head on the market. Now, that's to say, I don't have any experience on, I don't have any experience with really right stuff on the medium or the large size. Yeah. Because I don't know we have them and I've played with some that are gimbal, but I don't have a lot They're of experience. Solid. I do. This is the Gitzo. That's the mammoth. This is a 5562 LTS. This guy is actually really small. Right? Well, here, let's hold it up. But it's 15 inch laptop. It's so actually get a, very a dense. Port. However, if I handed this over to somebody and I asked them to open this all up to see how big it is, you'd be surprised as to how big it is. This might be Spencer's job <laughs> during the commercial break. But and, it's. Um, and that. That tripod goes with with Bill Fortney. That that goes, you know, Bill Fortney, amazing landscape outdoor shooter. Yep. And uh, and Bill's Bill's theory on tripods, and this is for landscape and outdoors, is if it doesn't hurt you when you carry it, it's not a good enough tripod. Right. It's not strong enough, and it's not steady enough. That's Bill's Bill's feeling on tripod, and he's been shooting for years. Right. If it doesn't hurt you when you carry it, it's not strong enough for your camera. Now, so. on the flip side, these are all very expensive tripods. What about cheap tripods? You know who turned us onto a really, really cheap tripod? Oh, yeah. Cheapish by comparison. Yeah. Now, we don't know anything about it, so we're obviously going to have to defer to the man. Uh, Peter Hurley. Peter Hurley was here when he was doing some stuff. He was talking. He talked about this company called Faisal. F-E-I-S-O-L. Uh, Faisal Tripod. I'm just going to do a quick search here. Faisal USA. High quality tripod. Let's just go ahead and take a look at them. This is the website. Faisal.net. They talked to us a little bit about this, and... Yeah, I'll get to that bag in a second. Sorry. Um, they talked. To, he talked to us a little bit about this. He was ecstatic about it because he's a tall guy, and he's like, "You want to see a tripod that's really cool?" Yeah. And we're like, "All right." He runs out to the car, takes us out to the car, and he's like, "Take a look at this." I want to try one. And he hands it to us, and we're like, "Wow, <laughs> it's light. this but it is feels cool. good. It's light. It and, feels good and strong." And that's the thing. It's it from a price standpoint. I mean, the price standpoint was like, you know. 40% less yeah. or something like that. So if you're looking at a cost standpoint, you might want to consider the Faisal. Talk to Peter Hurley. Go you know, have a conversation with him. He'll tell you all about it. Um, but, you know, I would say get so really right stuff in Faisal would probably be the three makers yeah. right now that I think that I would look at. And ball heads? Really, really right, right stuff, stuff, period. All right, let's see. Uh, let's, let's take um, – oh, I was going to ask you – Hey guys, why y'all are talking about that? Uh, Jeff, Petey, Jeff Snyder. Oh, 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 Jeff yeah. Snyder wanted to throw in. He's for the contest today. He's going to throw in a free shapeshifter bag from Think Tank. Nice. So that's a little little kick in from Jeff Snyder. So we got to say thank you to Jeff over at Adorama. Thank you, Adorama. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Think Tank Photo. You guys can win one of these at the end of the show. Awesome, dude. This is my favorite bag, man. It's like three hundred and something dollars. Ask Jeff if he wants to give away sixteen to thirty-five too. (laughs) (laughs) So Jeff, little love around here, sixteen to thirty-five. It just got a lot more interesting. All right, let's see. Oh, uh, a couple. Yeah, we'll a couple minutes. Answer one more. uh, Nap members too. If you're watching this. Go to the NAP member website. So much of the stuff we're talking about today, uh, NAP members get discounts. There's a link on the NAP member website for discounts. Um, you get up to 30% off a, a st- you know, laptops. You get 30%. Off. It's like you save like 300 bucks on this thing. Right so. here. Members.photoshopuser.com. Make sure that you go here. This one section right here, discounts. Click on that. That's the place where you're going to get a whole bunch of different discounts. There's our buddies at MPix, b and Adorama. You name it. They're going to get you some really, really good stuff. So... Some really, really right stuff. <laughs> It'll be in there. Yeah. So great things. Make yeah. sure that you take a look at that stuff you want. Oh, there's Peter Early. Nice, nice, nice. Hey, uh, Bluefin, gear bags. Favorite small, medium, or large? I've already talked about my small one. 
There's another one from Think Tank photo that I like. I, I have it in the office. Maybe during the break, I'll, I'll get somebody to get it or I'll get it myself. This shoulder bag here, the retro retrospective, I think are really, really nice bags. I like the fact they're, they're really inconspicuous bags. I'm really excited about the Looks like a laptop, like 70. messenger bag. Yeah, it's, it's just very, very undercover. So a lot of the times when I'm, all, like, I'm going out and I want to shoot, if I'm going small, one camera, one lens kind of thing, I'll use the 20. And this one doesn't look like a camera bag, right? It's not screaming bells and whistles and drops. And no, it's, like and it's, it's like, just, what, that... Yeah. Somewhere around that big. I'll bring it I, love, I, I love those bags because they're more just kind of like lens bags. Mm -hmm. They're more just like you're going out shooting. You're not traveling with like all your gear lenses. You're going out shooting. You want to be able to change lenses. You don't want to put a huge backpack on that you got to then take off and get all your gear out and then throw the backpack back on. Um, th those are really good bags for that. Um, and then as far as big bags go, uh, I, I use what you use, which is the Think Tank Airstream, Airport Airstream. Uh, no, the, uh, well, I use, there's you, two you, bags. You go, you go yeah. up a size. I don't, I don't go up a size. I, I use the Airport Airstream. Yeah, there's the Airport Security. I'm going to go ahead and just Air leave security. <clears throat> real quick. So there's this bag right here. Here, let me just cross you. I'll get and bring it over to the jib shot. And this bag is the new bag from Think Tank. So this is the Foresight, which I think is pretty neat. Um, I like the fact that it has that spinning four wheels. I like the fact that you can kind of push it. You don't necessarily need to tip it, right? Because if you have a lot of gear, what will happen is when you're trying to carry gear and it's heavy and you're doing this, this is really hard for you to do. So by having it this way and pushing it, you can get and push. Yeah. For big bags, <coughs> that's the big bag that I use, right? So that's the airport... Uh, this is the airport security V2. Yeah. You and use I use the, the smaller one, which I is use the international the, one. Yeah. So this guy carries a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. We can take another question. I'll start emptying stuff out. All right. I, I can take a really quick question. Camera strap or handheld like Jay? I have a camera strap I use, and it's right up on my computer here if they want to pull it up. Uh, it's from upstrap-pro.com. You can see it's got this little grippy thing over here, and uh, it'll never slip off your shoulder. So this that's what I love about it. Yeah, rc has got it over here. Upstrap. Take a look. D3S. It'll never slip off your shoulder. I don't like, I don't, and RC, RC had the best reason of why I don't like this. And I didn't even know I didn't like this. It, I, there's, there's other straps that go across your body and leave your camera. 24 7. Leave your camera hanging down at your side. <laughs> and when you want to use it, you just grab your camera. And the way the strap works is it just comes across your body. Okay. And so the strap is always across your body, kind of like Chewbacca had his little belt across. Mm -hmm. And so the camera's always there, and you just pick it up and use it. You know why I hate it? Man boobs. Man boobs. It goes straight across your body, and yeah. man boobs. I'm a chubby guy, so you know what, what happens when that happens? All of a sudden, it's like... Man boobs. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, and you cannot look cool. I'm sorry, there's a little bit of an ego. You cannot look cool having half a man boob hang out on a shoe. It's yep. just, it's a deal breaker. It Absolute is. deal breaker. If make, a, make a pad this big that squishes the boob, and then you're totally cool. Other than that? Yeah. And, and I'm sure they work. I'm sure they oh, work. Oh, they work fine. But, but it's, it's just it's man, man boobs. boobs. So. All right, so that one was easy. Let's see. Uh, Jack D, I shoot with a D7000. Is there a DX equivalent to the 70 to 200? I think the 70 to 200 works fine. Um, on a DX, I mean, I used to use my 70 to 200 all the time. Uh, 70 on to 200, 3556. Five, the the 3556 five, uh, VR is like a $500 lens. You get a little bit more loons. What? Yeah. A 70, 70 to 300. 300. 70 to 300, 3556. Uh, is so, sharp. Here, here's what I'm going with, because we were going to go here later. Um, I'll, I'll just throw. I'll throw okay. while you're getting your stuff ready here. I'll throw my. my if I had one lens. If I had one lens that I could take out with me, for landscapes, I'd take the Nikon 16 to 35 and mention that. For, for, port or for just general shooting, 28 to 300. For portraits, that's 70 to 200 freaking rocks. It, it's just an amazing lens, both in Canon and Nikon. You can't beat that lens. If you don't have enough, if you want to shoot portraits, you're, you're outdoors, you want to shoot outdoor portraits, even in the studio, and you don't have enough money for that lens and you're thinking about buying something different, save up until you can buy that lens. Um, I used to love the 85 1.4. I know everybody talks about the 85 or the 50 or whatever. The problem with those lenses are, it, you can really only shoot one person with them. Unless you're gonna stand back 
and and you're gonna shoot you're gonna shoot more you know head and shoulders or, or full body length portraits. But if you're gonna get in tight on portraiture, those really low aperture, really wide depth of, uh, wide aperture lenses are difficult because if if the person that I'm shooting is just an inch back next to my face their eyes are gonna be blurry at 1.4. And why buy an 85 1.4 if you're not, not gonna, gonna shoot, shoot it at, at 1.4? 1 4. If you're gonna knock it up to 2.8 or 5.6 or something like that, that's 70 to 200, it's a sharp lens. When you put it out at 200, and you put it at 2.8, 200, and you stand back from your subject and you get some distance inside of there, people will ask you all day long, did you shoot that with a 50 or an 85 1.4? Nope. Because it looks like you did. It's just, it's got that beautiful background blur and it's, it, it's, it's a wonderful lens. It's a sharp lens, it is a workhorse. So that's my, uh, th those are my favorites for three different you know, types of, of shooting. This is all of the stuff that was, at, just while we were at it, I was unpacking. This is actually all of the stuff that was inside <laughs> of that. RC's camera bag threw up on the that table. That foresight. So here we have just really quickly, so we have two SB800s, we have an SB900. We have an umbrella strap, uh, the Nikon D800, which you absolutely love at this we have point. To, we haven't talked camera bodies yet, but we'll so, talk camera bodies. D3S, the end. my two go to lenses, 24 to 70, Nikon 24 to 70, and a Nikon 70 to 200. Those are the two go to lenses that I go to for almost everything. Every now and again, I use a 50. This is a 50, oh no, a 50 1 4. It's all right. Nifty 50 is okay. Every now and again, both up straps. Yep. And most of this stuff gets triggered by, I use Allen Crumb Skyports. So, because we use them in the studio yeah. as well. So these things, these triggers will go ahead and just mount. So I have three of those usually. And I take those triggers and I use, I mount them with, let's say here's a, hey Brad, this is yours actually. <laughs> I gotta give this back to you. So All these right. are the three triggers. But anyway, there you go, one, two, three. No, I think um, that's my trigger, I'm sorry. What? My trigger, that's not Brad's, that's my Oh, trigger. that is your trigger, okay. Uh, real quick, we can get through this one, but Glenn Dewis mentioned, he said, guys definitely talk about tether stools. Ooh, tether tool, yeah. tether stool. God. It's with me today. We like tether tools Let's talk about lot. tether tools. Um, I got their website up on my computer here. You can, you can see it here. But if you're shooting in the studio, um, if you're shooting tethered in any way to any type of device, this is the this is the gear that you need to use. So cords, stands, you name it, this is the gear you need to use. Uh, let's see here. So we can take a Glenn off. Rich, uh, well, actually, why don't we take a break? Let's we got take a break. A break. We yes. got a break that was coming up. Let's take a quick break. We come back. We got a bunch of other questions. Uh, other than that, uh, oh, I'll talk about this too. This is pretty cool. Oh, it's the, it's the, the transformer clamp. So all right, we'll be right back. I'm Eric Vallon, a lifestyle portrait photographer. Photography, for me, I'm a people photographer, so I love working with the people and working in beautiful locations together. You're shooting lifestyle photography and you're looking through your camera lens and you're getting those frames and all of a sudden the moment happens, I mean, you know it instantly. The great thing about lifestyle photography is I try to capture real moments with it, so I set the stage to let those moments happen and as they unfold, I'm just there lucky enough to be the one pulling the trigger and getting it on film. For my upcoming class, Outdoor Lifestyle Photography, the key to capturing that moment in that location is finding what's unique about that location, what really stands out to you right away, and then compressing it. In this class, I'm gonna teach you how to select those locations, how to light them for control and contrast. Everybody loves the lighting techniques, but in the end, it's all just to set the stage so that moment can happen, and we walk away with an image that goes ahead and showcases the beautiful spot we were at and captures the moment as it happened in it. Please join us for the rest of the class. You're really gonna love some of the techniques I've gotta share.
I can't wait to do this again. Hey everybody, we are back live on the grid. Mac Laskowski here with RC Concepcion, hey, and uh, you guys just saw a commercial for Photoshop World. Um, we hope that you'll uh, you'll you'll consider hitting Photoshop World this year. It's in Las Vegas. Uh, it's the first week of September. I forget the September fifth through seventh. There you go. At Thank the Mandalay God, Bay RC's. Convention Center. Oh, that's because it's up on the screen. I just saw it. I remembered <laughs> it. <laughs> but uh, I'll be teaching there. RC will be teaching there. Scott's there. Joe McNally. Um, uh, who else is there? Joel Grimes, Cliff Jamie Mountner, Zell, Dave Black, White. Jeremy Cower, Ben Wilmore. I mean, there's a, a ton of uh, photography, Photoshop, Lightroom. If you want to learn about it, lighting, get to Photoshop World. Great conference. Yeah, it's 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 great. PhotoshopWorld.com. That's the place for you to go. Stay at the Mandalay Bay. Stay stay where the instructors stay. I always tell people like get involved as get involved as much as you can. Stay where the instructors stay because you're around everything. That's the key point with it's, all of this stuff. It's, you, you can take, there's online training classes. You can do all this stuff online. If you're going to go out to a conference, get where everybody is because you'll get more out of the conference yep. that way. It, it, sleep when you get home. Yeah, exactly. When you come back from Vegas, that's when you sleep. I tell people. We do. <laughs> go all the way out. Swing for the fences. Go out there yeah. and make sure that you meet and talk to and hang out and socialize and, and interact and network with everybody there. That's what it's there for. All right, let's take, uh, we'll take Rich T's question really quick. Uh, what do you guys think of Smug Mug looking for an easy way to show my images, possibly sell some prints? I love Smug Mug. Um, I think Smug Mug is great because, how do I say this in, in the right way? It, a lot of the products that we use, Lightroom, Photoshop, don't have web integration for, for websites, no. even Lightroom. I mean, let's call a spade a spade. Uh, the web module has not changed in years inside of Lightroom. So I, I can't with a good conscience point people to the web module to get your photos online. Smug Mug incorporates, Smug Mug works with all these programs. Mm -hmm. They've got a great looking interface. They've got great looking websites. Um, they, they, they tie right into Lightroom so that you can put a client proofing gallery up. Mm -hmm. People can do pics. And all that stuff comes back to Lightroom. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the Facebook and Flickr integration with comments. Mm -hmm. All stuff comes back to Lightroom. They can order right there. Um, I, I think it's a great service. It's so highly if you're customizable. looking to get your work online, um, I would say Smug Mug is, is really yeah, one of I, the best I, ways to go. I'd agree. Smug Mug is great. You can customize most of that stuff. Incidentally, actually, if you're watching, I'm actually making a class on Kelby Training to teach people how to customize their awesome. Smug Mug website. So I'm gonna, I'll have a class and that talks it, about yeah. how to do that, and then I'll have a class on how to be able to customize it. So okay. it's going to be great. Uh, let's see. Disjointed Images says, what would be the most unusual, atypical piece of gear you own that you couldn't do without? Wow. Actually, Unu unusual, atypical. atypical. Well, this is unusual and atypical. Um, it's close to what I would use. This is a Manfrotto 244. It's a magic arm. What I like about this is... This thing is just basically two clamps. So you see this top clamp here, right? So this thing just kind of opens up and down. And basically there's one on each side, but you can take this off, right? So if you take this off on here, you can go ahead and put a ball head. It looks like the Terminator's arm. Right, right? So what happens with this is you can go ahead and get shots in places that you normally did not think that you can get shots from. So here, what I'll do is I'll take this and I'll clamp it somewhere. Right on my arm. Right, on your arm, or on the rail in the Emboss Day building, mm -hmm. right? And then this ball head, and I like this this one. There's one that has a knob and there's one that has switches. I like this spinning knob, because the moment that this becomes loose, this goes everywhere. So now I have this on the railing, I get it exactly where I want it. As soon as I get it where I want it, you turn it, rock solid, right? If you tie everything down, that thing ain't moving. That's allowed me to get great shots from really, really cool places. So here on the Scott Kelby website, great tip for shooting where tripods are banned. <laughs> so I went up to the Empire State Building and I actually shot and I used the exact same thing in that setup. So there's the Empire State Building. Can you use a tripod? No. But well, I can bring that. I can bring this. So I took that and Inside of there, I was able to get really, really cool shots because I was able to get my camera yeah. steady. So camera, cool. getting the camera steady is good. All right, unusual atypical. I think I mentioned mine before, and my, I mean, mine changes. I use unusual atypical things all the time. But I think I mentioned mine before. Uh, the one I couldn't do without now is that Lee Big Stopper. Mm -hmm. um, that just 
that's what I'm into right now. So that's that's something I take with me everywhere. Uh, let's see here. Not camera related, but hardware software. Uh, what hardware software do you use for calibrating displays? Uh, we use uh, spiders. The spiders. Data color. Spider. Data color .com, The spider. Whatever. Um, I don't get the. I don't get the. You don't have to do the print calibration. Just get the display one. Mm -hmm. the, the print one is for you know specialty papers and everything. Just get the display calibrator. You don't need to create your own print profile. So it'll save you some money because they're cheaper. Yes. Yeah, so uh, Jeff Snyder jumped in. Yes. Matt did mean Lee Big Stopper. The Lee Big Stopper. Yeah, the Lee Big Stopper. Uh, let's see. I know you guys are Mac guys. Thoughts on the new non-upgradable MacBook Pro Retina? Oh, I want one so bad. Like <laughs> nobody's cool. business. So, so my initial <laughs> thoughts right now would be they'd be... They'd be tough to work on because the software, like Photoshop and, and Lightroom, haven't been updated for them yet. So, so yeah. your, your text is going to be really small because mm -hmm. it's a really high resolution, mm -hmm. right? And just so you guys know, I, I, if we're talking laptops, I, RC and I differ here. I have, I have a horrible eyesight. Um, so I can't get, I have to get the glossy version of the MacBook Pro. I can't get... And I like the glossy version, so it's okay. But I can't get the uh, matte. the matte version of the MacBook Pro because the 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 display res resolution the re resolution is like 1980 by whatever, and I just can't see it. Um, it's just, it's just my eyes are so bad that I can't see it. So I have to get the glossy version um, so that my display resolution is 1440 by 900. Right. Um, so the so right now until software gets updated, the retina display would be hard for me mm -hmm. because I, I just can't see it. Yeah, see, and the resolution on my on mine, like I use, I usually work at a really big resolution. I don't yeah. know if they could even see this because uh, they just switched resolution. I don't know if IVGA is going to pick it up, but uh, I'll just check just to be on the safe side. But this is usually how I work, and my Can, resolution is there you go. 1680 by 1050. It's cut off because you can't see your, your dock at the bottom. So. Yeah, so you can barely see the fact that uh, you can barely see the icon. My icons are like three pixels yeah. by three pixels. So, so yeah, I, it's just, I, I guess it's personal taste. Now, so the retina would be hard for me right now, but when software gets upgraded for it, no, that's that said, the thing that I like about the Retina display or the Retina display iMac is it literally is uh, sixty percent smaller. Yeah. It it looks like a MacBook Air. So for one, it's so much smaller. Like I picked it up and I was like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. So that's one. Two, two fire, two uh, Thunderbolts. So yeah. if you're using Thunderbolt, if you're gonna go to Thunderbolt drives, that's great. Even if you don't go to Thunderbolt drives, they're USB threes. So automatically having USBs plus Thunderbolt plus a retina display, that part I think is really, yeah. really cool. It doesn't bother me that they're a non-upgradable. Just buy 16 gigs when you start and you're usually pretty good. But yeah, I love it. All right, um, two, two, two more. Let's take these really quick. Uh, can you recommend low to medium price strobes? All right, what so uh, Allen Crown BXRIs are probably yeah. what I would go with for that. I think they're about 600 bucks. If you wanted to do something a little bit cheaper, under 600 bucks, if you wanted to do something cheaper, you could go with like, uh, you know, Posse Buff mm -hmm. or something like that. My money's on Allen Crown. You know what? I like I like what Ellen Crom can do. I like the what those lights Skyport's can do. Built in. I like the Skyport that's built in. So I think that bang for buck, Ellen Crom is going to be the best way for you to be able to go. And that's low and medium. I mean, yeah. you can get the RX 800s, R, you know, the 1200 RXs, the style 1200 RXs. Those things are phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Has anyone tried Expo Imaging Ray Flash or have suggestions on Universal Ring? So I can't stand Ring Flash, though. So for me, I don't like Ring Flash either. So, but I love Expo Imaging. has a lot of great stuff. They have the uh, the flash benders. Mm -hmm. um, so if we're talking gear, uh, flash benders from Expo Imaging, I think are really cool. Mm -hmm. You you put them on your flash, and there's these little Velcro things that will bounce and mold and kind of shape your flash into different I like them for their grids. They have these good, good grid the adapters, which I think are really, really and good. And color gels, too. And the color gels. And That's color right. Gels. So, so uh, giveaways. Shapeshifter from Adorama. We're also giving away a copy inside of that Shapeshifter bag. We're going to put in a copy of Capture NX2 from the folks over at Nikon. So if you use an Nikon camera and you want to get the most out of that net file, this is going to be the software for you to use it. Make sure you take a look at this. Matt's just like, e <laughs> yeah. I like I like Capture NX. It's, it's, it's neat. It's pretty good. We can throw that in the bag. Pete, yes. how are they going to do this? All right. Well, I just turned off the uh, open moderation, so now you can send in your name, your email address, and whether or not you would want to win this if you're a Nikon shooter. We've got the camera bag and the NX. Anything else? RC's gear. 
Hey, All you know what we haven't talked gear. about yet, though? What? We'll finish up with this one. Camera bodies. <laughs> Camera bodies. So anyway, if you if you're to send in your name, your address, email address, and that you want to win the uh, shapeshifter bag, we'll hook you up. Cool. One of y'all is going to win. Only one. Only one. Just one shot. That's, that's it. it. And oh, hey, uh, Scott's got a uh, Scott's uh, kicking off a brand new seminar too. So oh, he's yeah, got a bunch of doing? dates coming up with his Photoshop CS6 for photographer seminar. So uh, we will we will give away a ticket to the seminar okay, as well. Just say you want to go to that seminar. Just yeah, shelbytraining.com slash live. So there's Nashville, Tennessee on July 23rd, and there's Philadelphia on July 27th. So if you want to go to one of those, and put something in there. Hey, this is big news. What's that? You're going to be, you're going to be teaching some yeah. dates on that one, too. Yes, that's right. When's that's your right. first one? You're, you're uh, coming up I in think August, I'm right? Going, I think I'm going to uh, Charlotte, I want to say, North Carolina. Awesome. I'm going to be going August 14th. Dude. I know. Going back out. Going back out. So it's out been on a, the road. It's been a bit. It's 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 been a bit since I went out. So I was I was busy with books, but now it's like yeah. I'm gonna go back on the road. And specify the city when you you uh, you add your your contest thing and specify right. what city you want. All right. Let's let's finish up with bodies, camera bodies. We'll preface this by saying we both shoot Nikon. So if you're looking for what Canon body to shoot, talk to Pete. Pete, what Canon body do you shoot? I shoot with the uh, 7D, and I'm saving up for the 5D Mark III. Yeah, I was just going to say, what would you buy? If money wasn't an issue, what would you buy? Oh, I love the uh, 5D Mark III. I've been able to take it out, test it out, and it's a beautiful camera. I love the, uh, the auto-focusing, the, the two slots. It's just a beautiful camera. So, okay. Uh, that's the one I would buy. 7D is a great camera, too. Yeah. Your choice. Uh, you know what? For a while, I thought I wanted the D4. I actually i am keeping my D3S, and I actually just got the D800. <laughs> <laughs> that camera does something to you. It does something to you. And I went out to Bodie and I was shooting with some guys at Nikon. I was shooting with Bill Fortney and I was shooting with Bill Pakela from Nikon Professional Services. The pictures that were coming out of that camera made you want to go back and reshoot everything that you were doing again. The level of detail that you get out of that D800 is phenomenal. That alone is, is an episode. Um, so it's one of those things where it's I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to tell on Matt because Matt, I was going to tell the story. Go ahead. Tell the story. Go ahead. I was going to tell the story about about me telling you you're crazy and then coming Go back ahead. and saying. <laughs> All right. So oh, I'm trying to find a uh, I'm trying to find something on here. Um, so so the, the way this happened is it's when that cur first came out. I'm like. What do you need that much detail for? What do you need that much? You know, 36 megapixels. Do you really need that? And uh, you know, what are you gonna do with it? I borrowed, I borrowed Scott's D800. Uh, I forget where. Where did I go? Oh, I went up to. I was in Portland, and I went to Mount Hood. Um, and I might even have the picture here. So I, I borrowed Scott's D800, and uh, I came back, and I was hooked. I, I didn't know I wanted that much detail until I had that much detail. When I saw it, talk for a second, because I want to find them in the oh, photo. Oh, yeah, no, and that was, and there is one very specific thing that you need to keep in mind when you're doing that kind of stuff, though. Well, the first time that I shot with the D800, I thought it sucked. I went out and I you shot You went on with a it. wedding shoot. I went on a wedding shoot with the D800, and I just thought it sucked. And I went to my buddy, I went to my buddy from Nikon and MPS, and I was just like, what's the matter with this? Why can't I use this camera? This camera sucked. And... He, he's a nice guy in the world. Bill Fortney is the best guy, but it's just like all of a sudden he could just disarm you immediately. He turned around and he was just like, the problem with this RC is that the D800 will not accept sloppy shooting. <laughs> and I was like, dude, <laughs> seriously? I'm right here. And he's like, it's just mm -hmm. because it's 36 megapixels, any slight movement, any Anything. slight playing around with, you, you have to exercise good technique, cables, tripod studio shooting is going to be really really nice but what he told me changed everything he said if you practice good technique the d3s you can just wave everywhere mm -hmm. in the dark and you're good that's a phenomenal camera he said if you practice good technique you will be rewarded with stunning shots that's when i went let me go back and try it and those pick that picture that you're about to pull up Shows it. Yeah, so so th this is kind of what sold me. This is the one from Boston, long exposure from Boston, all right? So this is 12.5% view. So let me zoom in for you. 50, 66. Now we're at 100. I mean... Look at the detail. <laughs> if, there were, if, there were somebody, if there was somebody looking at me in that window, You'd from see how it. far away I, I would be able to see him there. Uh, here's another look at the rocks in this one. This, this was the one that actually first sold me, I think. I mean, it's just, it's crazy, crazy amount of detail. 
but it, it looks great. It gives you a, a, just a great feeling of a photo. So here's what I would say. If, if, I'm, if I'm going out on a portrait shoot and I'm taking, I'm taking a family to a park, I'm probably going to borrow, I have a D3, I'm probably going to borrow RC's D3S. The, D4, the D4 is a great camera, um, but I'm still happy with the D3S. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I think the D3S is still a really good camera. So I'm going to go with the D3S. Um, I'll throw on a 7200, but if I'm doing landscape, nature, if I'm going to do studio work and I can, I, like you said, you know, lock down on a tripod in the studio or just practice, you know, really good technique, I'd use a D800, but I, I think it's, it's really a great outdoor it's landscape. Phenomenal, type phenomenal. Of phenomenal. Um, and then what else? We got the, we, we talked about D3, D4, D3S, D4, D800, so that's, yeah. That's it. That's pretty much, it's a great camera. <laughs> it's, don't, don't try one because as soon as you try it, you're going to want one. Yep. It's, I, I, RC can tell you I did not want one and I was like, why would you want it? And now I, I want right. one. I was right. <laughs> he was right. <laughs> You know that about RC. He's always right. <laughs> Long show. Good show. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming back. Hey, I'm, I'm happy like, to be back. Thank you for being back in the office. I'm like, happy, so cool. happy to be back. And um, we'll be back here next week. I'm not sure who will be here in some form or combination. I mean, yeah. Some of us will be here. But uh, <laughs> thanks for watching, guys. Thanks to all our sponsors. Thanks to Jeff at Adorama. So if you guys are, are looking for camera gear, make sure you stop by uh, Thank you very Adorama. much for Mpix for the Hit My House Mpix, contest. check out the contest. And Spencer, thank you. Spencer, you rock. You rock, Spencer. Take care, everybody. Take care. See you next week. This week's episode of The Grid is sponsored by Impix. Shoot today, upload tonight, we ship tomorrow. Manfrotto. Imagine more. On One Software, software that gets you back to shooting. Adorama, more than a camera store. And Tiffin, helping create the world's greatest images.